I'm James McGuire, and our topic today is big data. We'll talk about best practices for big data, and we'll talk about the future of data analytics. To discuss that, I'm joined by Steve Stein, Chief Data Officer for AT&T. Hi, Steve. How are you doing today? Good afternoon, James. Nice to be with you. Thanks for the opportunity to uh, discuss uh, big data and uh, any other topics you have on your mind. Yeah. Well, you are there in, uh, in sunny Texas. Uh, tell me the city today. I'm in Dallas. Dallas. Okay, fantastic. I assume it's a sunny day today in Dallas. Well, actually, it's cloudy, but uh, that's a rarity. So we'll, <laughs> we'll take the clouds in cool weather. So it, it's interesting. Your job title is actually Chief Data Officer. That's a pretty new uh, job title. Um, I mean, I think the officer, the, the, the job of CDO did not exist several years back. What's going on with that? So um, in August of this year, when John Donovan was named CEO of AT&T Communications, Melissa Arnoldi uh, took over uh, as president of AT&T Technical Operations. Mm -hmm. So um, in running that role, she introduced the CDO and, and uh, I was given the opportunity to lead the CDO organization. I'd previously worked for John uh, around uh, a group that we had set up to do automation solutions, mm -hmm. um, really aimed at more of the hyper automation, you know, how to bring machine learning AI together. But one of the things that we always found that was interesting, it was, we, you know, we needed data to drive where we were going and, and to make sure that we were doing the right things as we looked at automation for the business. Right. And so uh, the big data organization existed we work very closely with them. And then the other piece of that, of course, is, you know, the um, really the data engineering and, you know, getting the data into the lakes, into the warehouses or wherever you need to, to do analytics for your scientists. So Melissa asked me to take those three organizations, the data supply chain, the big data, and uh, as well as the automation solutions group, bring those together to form the CDO. So that happened on August 15th of this year. Oh, it, it, it's a brand new gig, and uh, and you were you were a pioneer in in this new uh, new job title. Well, it is a new gig, and I'm really excited uh, about working with all of the um, not only the remarkable uh, team that I have within the CDO, but with our business partners to ensure that they have what they need to do uh, to make the business run successfully. Great. You know, I, I'm interested in, to get your thoughts in terms of uh, what advice you might give to companies about handling big data, because I think a lot of companies have gotten on, to, on board with big data in the last few years, and they thought to themselves, great, we can put all the numbers into the system, we're going to get insights back, we're gonna, not going to have to like, you know, fly by the seat of our pants as we did in the old days, but it hasn't always exactly worked out that way. I wonder what advice you might give and, and maybe a couple of best practices for big data leveraging. Yeah, I think um, as simple as it may sound, the biggest piece of advice I give is make sure that you know what you want from your data. Mm -hmm. So what it is that you're trying to get out of it. So we spend a lot of time with our business units, working real closely with them, making sure that they have what data they require in order to make the decisions that can you know, help our customer experience, cost structure, revenue, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so um, just really staying close to your partners and making sure that you understand their needs, prioritizing those in order to um, make sure that it's timely um, and it's uh, cost efficient for them to get their hands on it. Um, you know, we, as you probably are aware, we handle a large amount of data. I think the last number I saw was 168 petabytes traversing our network on a daily basis. Wow, that's There's a lot, lot of data. going on there. And then behind that, you've got operational data within the network and other components. And so I think making sure that you know what are the, the elements that you need for the business to be equipped uh, to be successful is job one of ours. So that's, if, if I, am I simplifying that down correctly by saying you've got to know what question to ask the system? Is that is that a, a bottom line there or not necessarily? Yeah, it, it is, but I, I want to emphasize it's not really about us in the CDO going to the business units with technology or, you know, the, or the latest algorithms and, and asking where the business can apply them. It's more saying what would they like to accomplish and then helping engineer for them what they would require, whether that be, you know, data sets, whether that be automation solutions or anything else that will make them successful. Yeah. 
what, what, what challenges do you see out there for handling big data? I think it can be, you know, remarkably confusing. And, you know, some businesses have, have data scientists on staff, some don't. Even the folks who have data scientists on staff, I think they run into pretty much confusion. Are there, are there challenges you see out there that are sort of like the, the default challenges? Well, I'd, I'd say it begins with, you know, as I mentioned earlier, d does your client have the data that they need in order to make decisions? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, what we try to do is once we know what that is, uh, put it in, in, in those that needs to know's hands, but let their analysts work on it as well. We like to, to, to utilize a distributed model. I would hate to think that we just, as a group of data scientists, were the cue for everybody waiting for the right. next big brain idea to come from the, you know, the remarkable team that I have. But right. we really need to push this out, equip the business with the self-serve, self-enablement type of model. So you know, the business really needs to, to also work on what their analytic capabilities are uh, once they understand, you know, the things that they're trying to do to impact uh, positively, like I said, experience, cost structure, et cetera. So you're saying that folks, you know, in the cubicles, the folks out in the field can also get insights from the system. It's not just the, the folks in the C-suite. Yeah, I would tell you that if that's not happening and you're not enabling people to do that, then you're going to miss out on a lot of opportunities. Uh, even with the, um, you know, the advances in technology where you can get into machine learning so you can start to process larger quantities of data and get finding from, from that data, mm -hmm. um, you still want those that are closest to, whether it's operations, sales, care, that are closest to action, they're seeing things that are going on every day. They should be able to take that data that they know is being generated by performance or you know the things that our customers need and really try to work on an understanding themselves on on what it is that they may want to take play you know they may want to do to uh, have a positive impact right what about the cloud and, and data analytics seems like for a lot of companies the cloud is their first choice they're accessing their solutions through the cloud is should the cloud be be the automatic choice that it, it seems to be these days well um needless to say um there's a lot going on in that space and it's very exciting and um you know our approach is that uh, we need to consider all elements as it, as in, in all opportunities, frankly. So, you know, we have warehouses, we have uh, lakes, uh, you know, that we're managing on half, behalf of the business. We'll, we will have some of those, uh, you know, long into the future. Um, you know, we will, I'm sure, use the uh, cloud uh, appropriately as we move forward. So I see a hybrid mix for, you know, what we're trying to do. Uh, it's not going to be one size fits all, uh, right. particularly because of the, you know, the legacy information that we have available. You know, just moving it into the cloud alone, right. you know, would be a challenge in itself. And right. the other thing that we want to make sure of, you know, we keep a really close eye on this, is all activity and, you know, the safeguards around data. We want to be confident that wherever we are working with data, it has all of the, you know, the things that we would expect uh, you know, to safeguard uh, privacy and the things that uh, we, um, you know, care for uh, on behalf of our customers in the business. Right. What do you think about the, the future looking a few years ahead? When we get back together and have this conversation a couple of years from now, what are we going to be talking about in terms of big data? In other words, as companies ramp up their own systems, what should they be thinking about to get ready for 18 months from now? Uh, from now. Yeah, I, I, I would tell you the first thing that will be drastically different will be the technology. And I only say that because of the rate uh, that technology is being developed in the space now, um, whether it's analytics, whether it's automation, including AI, you know, all of those components. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a lot of investment, a lot of energy going in into this space. We know that there's, you know, some very high yield coming out of it as well. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that pace will it's certainly not going to slow. No. I think it will accelerate. So, you know, understanding, um, you know, that evolution of technology and how you apply that uh, to the environments that we're trying to operate are going to be absolutely critical. So that would probably be the one thing that, you know, I would say would change the most. And then the other is I, I do believe that we're going to learn a lot more as we go along. You know, data, not all data is created equal, and nor does it need to be. Right. And so, you know, being able to determine very quickly what you need from raw data and how far, how far along you need to mature it in order to get value for the business, that, 
you know, you may not need entirely business ready data sets for people to be successful, you know, and take care of our customers. And so I think we will see a uh, big opportunity to really understand, you know, how much of your data you actually need to be um, uh, shaping in order to get the most out of it. I, I'm not sure I understand that. You're saying that you can work with a partial data set, you don't need to be perfect before you start the process? Yeah, absolutely. I think okay. that the, depending upon what you're trying to resolve, um, you know, you, you may not need to have a complete data set in order to do that. And so I think we're going to learn a lot more of that as we go along. I mean, needless to say, there's some areas where, you know, you, you want to have a complete data set when it comes to things like network operations, obviously security items, mm -hmm. you know, intrusion. I mean, we, we, those are mission critical things that, you know, we want to be very, very certain around. There may be other things that we say, you know, we have enough to get going. Let's go ahead and see what we can do with this mm -hmm. before we have to spend a lot of time and energy and cost, you know, the, the investment in order to mature some of the data. Right. Well, what about the AI piece? That to me is fascinating. Some of the things going on where, where the machine develops something of an independent entity, the machine can, to a certain extent can, can teach itself. Um, do you see, how, how do you see that shaping corporations these days? Well, I, I think um, uh, it will, will have an application in, um, I, I, I can't imagine uh, any area where you wouldn't benefit, particularly when you're handling large amounts of data um, from the machine insights. Now, you know, in order to get there, you have to get the data to the machine. You have to give the machine the opportunity to learn. You right. know, you still need people involved with it to make sure that it's learning as you would expect it. And then ongoing, you know, uh, overseeing the learning to ensure that, uh, you know, the outcomes that you're expecting continue, um, hopefully, to improve. And so, um, you know, the I think that the key is going to be finding, um, you know, when should you just programmatically put machine learning against data sets. Once again, not all data is required to do that um, and would benefit from that, but where would it apply? So I think that you'll see um, a, you know, a, a continued um, emphasis investment in this area. Uh, the technology will continue to move along very quickly. Uh, I think more algorithms will be available. Uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see what would be proprietary in this versus open source right. as we go forward that will really accelerate this and, and let many people take advantage of, of findings as they happen. Mm -hmm. Steve, I think you said it. Is there anything you'd like to add before we, we wrap up today? No, I appreciate the opportunity to visit with James. Uh, you know, um, appreciate the work that you do, uh, the insights that you share, um, you know, with uh, all of us that follow you. So uh, thank you for your time, and um, we'll uh, look forward to talking in the future. Steve, thank you very much. I'll send you the link when we're done. We can all uh, we tweet about it. Okay. Thank you.